So I'll call the meeting to order. Are you ready? All right. Agenda date, time, and location were properly announced. And we will start off with the approval of the minutes. Is there a motion for to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of January 16th, 2023? I make a motion. Green needs their second. Second. Matt, any uh, corrections, questions? I have a question regarding, um, I wasn't here, but apparently there was a presentation made last week by uh, uh, yeah. Blaine Warner about the uh, heart, cardiac arrest information or cardiac testing that could be done. And as I was looking at the NEOLA updates, like the section 5340, is that kind of addressed that? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Because I was going to wonder if we're going to come back to visit that, but it sounds like that does. Yeah, it actually came out came out at a really good time for an update. Neola gave us some updates. We can talk about that and how that will help with uh, with that situation with the presentation last month. Okay. That's all. No, great. Thank, thank you. Right. Any other? All those in favor, please say, uh, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, then we have the payment of bills for a motion to approve uh, for the month of January the amount of $896,997.98. So moved. Chuck, is there a second? Any, any questions? All questions were submitted to me. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? motion carries and the cash summary i just wanted to bring your attention to as you look at the top you see some rather large sr2 and sr3 um one of the things that we are going to do here um and i, I know patty can talk a little bit more uh we talked in, in our last uh, meeting federal funds come with all kinds of uh, red tape and when you spend over a certain amount of uh, federal funds, you have to do another level of audit. So we have decided to use our ESSER funds to a certain amount that we have to just do a federal audit last year, and we will have to do one this year. But after that, our um, funds will be at a point that we won't have to do the federal audit. And if you ever want to talk to Patty about how much she loves the federal audit, go ahead and do that at a non-board meeting time. <laughs> Months, months extra for it. So. Okay. And what we're doing is we're purchasing just a lot of stuff this year that will be for next year, laptops, things like that, some of the big items that fall under the extra Okay. Um, donations. Uh, a couple different donations. Uh, first of all, Mrs. Reed got a Donors Choose project uh, funded um, for STEAM. And also, we want to thank the anonymous family that uh, paid $125 for five of our students so they could go to the Museum of Science and Industry. Um, those are always little fun pieces when a family reaches out and asks how they can help. So thank you to our donors choose and our anonymous, anonymous family. Okay. Comments from the public? I don't have anything. Referendum discussion? Um, everyone should have seen this update in your packets. Uh, this is going to go out uh, to the staff on Friday and we'll put it out on Facebook. It's just our way to keep up on all the things that we're doing. Thank you again for uh, Chuck and Rini. We had a great visit last Wednesday to Oosburg. Uh, that was the week before we were in Northern Ozaki. And uh, this Wednesday, we will be going to Glendale. I always get the Green Dale. Green Dale. One of those G Dales <laughs> down in Milwaukee um, to, to look at. So, you do see the most recent updates. Um, I don't know anything that you guys want to talk about, about the updates or anything to get the board up to speed. It's been fun. It's been interesting. We've gone a lot of changes. A lot of evolutions the more we see the kind of more we learn and we're not there yet but i think we're really focusing and kind of getting it narrowed down to where we think we should be i can tell you the plan there is different than the plan we have now because some of the things that we talked about on wednesday uh have changed the configuration of the office and 
Uh, those came back really nice too. So I've been very pleased with Bray. They've listened, they've, they've found creative ways to make it work. Um, so we'll just keep going. I'm really impressed with the team. Like you said, Bray really listens and they're very responsive to any of the ideas that we have or questions. And, and then they have some really creative solutions too. And it's really nice to go see what their work looks like or the ideas look like in other teams. You never get the impression of pushing you hard to do one thing or the other. You just present a lot of options, and unless they have a subtle way of doing it, it's it's pretty good, it's pretty open-minded. I always find it because they spend a lot of time doing a drawing, right? And then we come like, no, that's not it. We want this, this, this changed, and then you know they do a good job of being like. Okay, we spent ten hours on that, but we can go and take it for you. So they've been they've been great, but uh, we're getting no, close. We can do the best part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, right in the, in that picture up there, what is that gray? That's all in the the new multi-purpose room. What is all that the gray drawings? It looks like sea green. Yeah, cafeteria oh, tables. The breadth that's on the other side, like where we were initially had connecting, like that map, or what is that bread? Well, it's it's in the stages that we want to maybe prepare for in case it's something. If we have funding later on down the road, we want to maybe make the basic preparations for it. Is that yeah, right. And since we have the architects here, um, we can have the, the way we're doing this with. Um, going to hard bid, it gives us some options and some flexibility that we wouldn't have if we had a construction manager. So we can bid things differently and having the blueprints of that, we can see, hey, will this fit? The road in the back, we are going to, we're going to use that to leverage and see who will give us the best bang for our money. So it costs us a little bit more on the front end for planning, um, but it'll be something we can always keep. And if it doesn't happen this time, it's the blueprints we could use for you know, the next time around, whoever, whenever that would be. Not saying it's happening anytime soon, but if it ever happens, yeah, we would have that. Any other questions? Did you have a question, Gary? Um, she asked my question. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's that old part of the high school where when I was a student, that was the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, All right, and then we will move on to uh, cybersecurity. Yes. Okay. So you might see a familiar face in the audience besides Gary. Um, <laughs> and um, so I'll just to give you a little background, Lee's been on me for the longest time. We really need to have another layer of support. Um, and, and it's something called EDR, and I didn't know how to spell EDR before this whole cybersecurity thing came down. And uh, actually this summer, uh, Brian and I connected and, and he got to show me what, he, what he's doing and, and some of the, the great things. And even at that time, I, first, I, didn't, I didn't even put two two. Yeah, you came down here. and toured our knock, right? Yep, yep. yep. And, uh, and, and just thought, you know what, we're, we're doing a lot of good things. And then about a month ago, Plymouth got hit with uh, ransomware. And Dan Mello was able to share with us on um, all the trials and tribulations of what's happening there. Um, it was a Ukrainian or a Russian, I think, corporation that put a Trojan horse into their system. The Trojan horse sat there for a few months until it had every backup system, everything else. Um, maybe don't put anything about Plymouth in in your article, but I don't want to rat them out. But it was a mess, you know, and and they have good systems in place. It's not like anything else, but these guys are good. They're professionals. They sit back there. And all of a sudden, when we start talking about ERs and, and it's it's endpoint detection, like where, where are emails coming from? How can we do that? Um, I asked Lee to start getting some quotes on, on what we would need to do. And it clicked. I'm like, I think this is what Brian does. So, so we call Brian, and and I just want to say, when we first started going down this, we were looking at quotes of upwards close to a hundred thousand dollars, even ninety thousand dollars. And 
Lee and Brian put their heads together and we're able to come to the table here for something around 13,000. That gives us the same amount of um, same amount of protection. So hopefully I didn't take all your thunder no, here, but uh, um, just been really appreciative of how we found creative ways to give us a higher level of support and not have to take a whole teaching staff worth of salary to make it happen. So, so Brian, can I just add to that real quick? So on the back of that proposal, uh, the tech at that school district co uh, coincided with um, a report that came out by an organization called CESA at the that's um, a, a sub group within the FBI, and they actually talked about cybersecurity needs in the public school districts nationwide and how they are now becoming a target. If you understand the reasoning and the purpose behind these targets or you know these. Uh, uh, these these threats are brought upon the school districts. They're usually understaffed, under you know, understaffed, underfunded. They lack the, the modern day protections, or act, even having access to those modern day protections, because they are very costly. Um, in addition to all of this, um, when this kind of came down, we uh, this report. I literally just read the report. I just was talking to. A good friend of mine uh, who has a, 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 a another company like mine in Ohio, and they are dealing with a, a, a K-12 cyber attack as well. So all this just kind of came together at the same time uh, within like 24 hours of each other. Lee and I were talking because we both caught wind of the uh, the other school district at the same time. And, you know, I just I said, how can I help? How can we make this happen? Just so happened he was looking at competitors. It just everything kind of fell into place at the right time. And yeah, I mean, we are in a position, my company's in a position now where we can help the K-12 uh, school districts and bring that same technology into the K-12 programs and would not break the budget. Um, where a lot of those, the if you go vendor direct, they're going to make you pay up front. To, so it's a huge capital expenditure. They're not flexible in that licensing, whereas we are. If you don't use a device that month, we can we can drop off that uh, that device off the invoice. Um, so that's that's what gives us some flexibility in getting these prices down to a point where they're very cost effective for the K twelve K twelve. And one of the reasons we were able to to get at an entry point like this when we were going out for bids. Um, it was always, how many devices do you have? Well, we have an environment that has 800 devices, right? Because we have kids and staff. That almost, almost 900. Almost 900. Um, and it's, it's a price per device. And through the brainstorming, they're able to say, well, let's just keep the kids off of our network. And through cloud printing, right? That's what we, yep. we have to do. Mm -hmm. We can keep our students, which are 700 of those devices, off of this. And so we just have our teacher on devices going forward. Wow. And you know, I appreciate that because, you know, a lot of vendors want to want that price per point. They like hearing that 900 more than the two. So, and, and I did attach that that report that came out. It's attached to the back of the, the quote. I mean, I would strongly encourage you guys to read that. It's pretty informative. It's not overly technical by any, any, any means, but it definitely highlights the risk associated with the K-12. K and just on this too, I just want to give, uh, if you're not aware, a lot of this, you know, Lee has been working with Homeland Security. Uh, that was about 18 months ago, Homeland Security offered to do an audit of our cybersecurity came in. And we were one of the few districts that took advantage of this. Yeah. We've been on the forefront to make sure we stay safe. Lee's been here, tell me, you know, got to spend more money, got to spend more money. And, uh, um, and I don't mind spending money, but we want to do it in a good way. Yeah. Here's something that I feel gives us a really good. Yeah. Another thing that kind of sets apart with, with what we've put together for the school district here is we are providing full SOC support uh, during the day, during eight, uh, your eight to five. So if there is an issue, we do have my team to back up Lee in the event that you guys have an issue. So another thing that we uh, I just started working with, with Mike on was because of how we work, how we operate the programs that we have put together, we have been finding that we are able to reduce, um, uh, enhance coverage and reduce the premiums on cybersecurity insurance. 
we've seen every one of our customers that we've been engaged with has seen a drop in their premiums and a, almost a doubling of their coverage. So we're, once this is kind of, you know, if the board approves it, once this is in, engaged and we're, we're starting to work through this, the next phase of this is we will actually uh, help you guys uh, look to possibly reduce your cybersecurity costs as well. So we we technically don't even need an approval for this because of the price point. If we would have went the other way, it would have taken action. Um, but this is one of those things where having a blessing is a nice thing. Just make sure we're on the same page. What are some of the goals? I mean, it's a basic question. Sure. When they there's cyber attacks on the school district, what are they trying to achieve? But what are the primary they want objectives? the students data. That's the biggest thing the because data. they can get in and get the students name birth date and social security number and you can open up a bank account for data harvesting for a primary for a young kid and then you're able to crush the credit for 18 years i mean how often how many of you have, i know everyone i know this answer right but how many of you have children and are and and then of those children how many of you are monitoring their credit <laughs> my but my point exactly sure. so so I mean, that's the primary goal. Yeah, that, 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 is that, is the the research, that and ransom. That they'll go in and they'll lock our data and try to ransom us for it and then sell our data. It's still, it's almost double extortion is what they do, along with using our networks to attack other people exactly. as well. Or other organizations. organizations. And they attack us because they know we're overstretched, that we don't have the resources that, like, <laughs> banks and other places do so they attack us and you know and they use us as training grounds so this wouldn't be on the students devices so what is on there that well student the student devices already do have all, all devices have um basic antivirus and protection from there there isn't the data that students are using isn't necessarily saved on their devices. It's all in the cloud and all protected through like Google and Schoology and that sort of sort of thing. What we're protecting from is from a computer getting hacked and then getting into the servers where all our what like financial data and a bunch of other stuff and getting future passwords and that kind of stuff. So starting next year, students will have no access to anything but their device will connect to the internet and go out to the internet, but they really don't need access to things that are happening in the building. But everything we do is in the cloud. So they go through our server now when they log on? They they have access to it, yes. They don't necessarily, you know, most of them don't actually access anything over there, but because they're on the same network and they're not isolated, they technically an attacker could technically hop over and get in there. That what we're going to do for next year will they will not be should not be able to each device will be completely isolated yeah. on the network so if one is compromised it cannot compromise anything else in the network. and we have other this is not the only piece of cyber security stuff either we put in this year or are looking at adding so we have other ways like if something happens and we know one's infected we can completely lock it down and isolate so they won't they won't be able to Another portion of this engagement with us and my team is um, what we call a business continuity plan. So in the event that you are breached, um, and in, in industry, you know, terminology, we don't say if, we say when you are breached, because it's, it's that common now. We have a business continuity engagement as well, um, significantly discounted, everything else, it's, you know, I want this for the school district. Um, but what we'll be able to do is, in the event that you are held for ransom or crypto locked, we will be able to bring you up in a, a separate, isolated environment, remove the infection, keep you up and operational while the other cleanup is going on. So we will be able to completely restore your information. That prevents you from having to worry about paying for ransom. And it helps keep your insurance costs down. I will say this through my work with the Wisconsin Cyber Response Team. Something like this would have saved time and resources at several of the breaches that I've either heard about or helped out. With. No, it sounds like something. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. Is there any questions I can answer? Questions? Yeah. 
put you on the spot, go for it. Why is your better than anything else here? Like I'm looking at Microsoft could be 365 could be comparable in price. Not the same technologies. Okay. Very different technologies. Support and support. And support. We're local. That's another good one. We like that. I understand the K the public school system having nine illustrious years with you find people. I, I understand how it works and it's a passion. Thanks for taking care of that. Sure. Do other school districts as well? Coming down the pipeline. Now that now that this is the technology and how we're operating here is no different than how I would engage with another corporate, uh, you know, corporate entity. Um, it's just tailored more towards the K twelve. Um, this we already have several engagements going on with other school districts. And uh, there will be an introduction I will be making to to Mr. Trimberger in the near future here um, that will uh, help us actually get this program into other school districts. So there, there's there's a lot of options here, and what we kind of found out is Gary, please don't put this in the paper, um, is that a lot of our competition isn't targeting K twelve, and we just so happen to kind of find a pretty cool niche here where we, where we can do some good. Help out. I would say in Inchboy County, there's only one district that does it. And it's one that was hit and they did this after they opened. Yeah. So we're in the second one in the county that's doing it now. And it's going to be something you do it now or you do it after you hit. And then after you hit, it's it's already too late. Yeah, I, I think I think last I heard it was getting into the $300,000. So and that's cheap. Not, I'm not exaggerating. That's cheap. That's probably because they realize that you're a school, they're a school district. Yeah, they did get, yes. I mean, I personally have dealt with smaller, smaller companies and they've been in the millions. And they don't budge, they don't care. Mm -hmm. Not their problem. Things are keeping me up with them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A little, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> That's valuable. It, yeah, I mean, it's, like I said, it's not the only piece we're doing, but this is a pretty major piece. It patches up a bit, a pretty big, oh. <coughs> a pretty big gap. Okay, um, look forward to uh, seeing that in place and working. Not that we have to use it, yeah. but we can deploy better. tomorrow. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, we're ready to wrap it all together. Okay. Great. That's exciting. You'll get to Great. check out Follow Mom. Hey, bud. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. Thank you, guys. Nice Thank seeing you. everyone again. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having Take care, you guys. All right. Uh, Safe routes to school. Hey, okay, real quick. Um, I got uh, an email from some of my friends up in the Green Bay area. Uh, the Bay Lakes EDU um, reached out and they said there's a rural school grant going on right now that can help with creating a plan for safe routes to school. Um, what it is is a 20% match um, for anything, and they figured it would cost us about $25,000 to do to infrastructure and costing to look at where safe routes to school would happen. Um, and, and one of the things I'd like to do is, is look at different, the east side of the lake we have to transport. And, and we may always transport, but there is some really great building and some other things that are going on in the community. And there may be an opportunity to use some of the new construction over there in a walking path to actually connect to the school that kids could get here on bikes and things like that. So for $5,000, they'll help us create a plan that would normally be $25,000 from the east side of the lake, Wolf Road, and even coming through um, this area over here. So um, again, this is not This is something I have down for board action. Um, and we would put a team together and, and create this plan. The plan would probably take about four months, four to five months, I think, to, to get done. And once we have this plan, we could actually then um, go after other federal grants to get some of this work done also. So, um, I actually, uh, Mike, uh, 
uh, Sam Filippo and I have talked about it and uh, in, in, he's in support of it. Um, but I thought just because of our transportation and everything else, it made sense for it to move here and for us to allocate $5,000 to do that with everything going on. So um, something like this, I could have made the, made the decision, but I thought it'd be good to just have a conversation here to see if there was any questions. So I think it's great. When you said that 20%, like we are paying 20%, and they're going to have to cover 80% of the cost? Yeah, so, so they'll pay 20. They, they figure it's going to cost us about $25,000. So we'll pay five grand, they'll pay 20. And is, is this just a study? Or is this actually to create some plans on how to create plans, infrastructure, bidding? Okay. Um, I want to, and I talked to Mike about this. I want to be creative on this because I don't want this just to be a district piece. I also, you know, there's been talk about putting a boardwalk along the lake. Well, I would like the walking path that goes from the east side of the lake to bring in to where that board pack is, what the boardwalk is. Because now through that boardwalk, we could actually use TID funds to help pay for some of those infrastructure needs that could be the match for any grant we have. So it's a nice opportunity to pull some of the synergies that are happening in our community together and, and create walking paths. Um, Dog, dog paths, and some of these things have been out there, but there's not a formal plan that actually has the infrastructure and cost. You can do it for a pretty nominal fee. I see the zero, oh, zero to two miles. Okay, then the east side would be within two miles. Yeah. yeah. Did we utilize this several years ago for the, the walking path from? Um, the other side of Random Lake Road, like Random Lake Road runs in front of the school, but it also runs through, like if you turn at the Flintstone Church. Um, oh, uh, oh, wasn't that Random Lake Road, yeah. a safe route to school for you? We did something with that, That's yeah. Spring Street. I remember when um, Tom was here. We had a safe route to the school. Mm -hmm. And um, because they were going to turn that into a walking to walk from that subdivision over there to make that right and it just never it never happened that that's still not a safe route so i think they designated some lines on the road right but that was it, about the extent of it no actual interest right it so. right it did improve it a little bit because it um there just wasn't money to you know nobody wanted to put money to make that it was so expensive because you have to do the whole road to make it bigger because of the ditches and everything. So that ended up not ever being a walking. And you know, we have some issues with Wolf Road. We have, um, you know, but we also have some opportunity, especially as we look at the road that we're looking at putting on the west side. Um, some conversations about Jack putting a road over in his land there. We could create a, a safe road to school from is that First Street, right? Over here, the scene was, right? First Street. That could actually connect us um, and, and, you know, go from there. So. Well, is there a motion to move one of them? Okay. Is there a second? I could. Chuck? Any other questions or discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have building reports. There is an attached which is how required reports. Um, if you've had a chance to take a look at the AGR report, this is something that is required for an additional grant that we receive for kindergarten, first, second, and third grades. It used to be called SAGE, and now it's AGR, the Achievement Gap Reduction. We took our baseline data in September. We have our mid-year data, and there is not a grade level where we have had have not had significant growth from point A to point B. We tend, we tend to see that happening. Um, AGR is intended to help us keep smaller class sizes. Their ratio is 18 to 1 as the recommendation, but if we go over the 18 to 1, we have to provide some additional support through instructional coaching. And if you look at the various grade levels, we do have a couple of grade levels that have exceeded the 18 to 1, 
but we do have instructional coaching in place for those grade levels to help be compliant with AGR. We need to monitor both reading and mathematics scores in, again, kindergarten, first, second, and third in order to be compliant with the AGR grant. We will have to do this one more time in May, and I will upload this wonderful thing tomorrow morning to the DPI so that we are compliant. Any questions about AGR? They're nationwide. They're, they're national rankings. Correct. Correct. Yes. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they can perform well on a test. So there's some test taking skills that are involved in this as well. Um, we also see an awful lot of summer slide. So our fall scores typically are our lowest scores regardless of the grade level. Um, next, mid-year exact path that goes right along with AGR. Uh, it's exact path data that we use in order to get the data for AGR, so I'm happy to tell you that we have completed our mid-year AGR or exact path. Um, fourth grade, gosh, I don't even know how long ago it was started, they do a living wax museum, and that was last week, Thursday, in the snowstorm. Um, it was absolutely fantastic. They worked very hard. The students each get to research a person, either from history or a current person, and they do a presentation based on that person's life as if they were that person. So they get a little button on their hand, you push the button, and the wax museum comes to life, and the student gives about a, a minute to a minute and a half presentation on the person that they researched, and then their wax museum goes back to wax. So that was a really awesome thing to have in our cafeteria last week. Um, yes. It, it is really neat to come down and see it, yeah. Um, so seventh grade, uh, two weeks ago, the entire grade level listened to a presenter that shared her story on um, the naturalization process, so how she became a U.S. citizen. So it was really uh, quite interesting and a lot of good, good questions by the students as they're in uh, social studies learning all about that at this time. Computer science training. So there's a team of five of us that are going through CESA 7 to really uh, learn about computer science and then a scope and sequence from K-12. We're, we're really focused on what are some computer science courses for our middle school electives, thus leading into the business courses and also our tech ed courses that um, both have computer science as a part of their curriculum. And so Debbie Poole, Cindy Barber, Andrea Peterson, and Lisa Grubasik as a media specialist, along with myself, uh, attended the first day of training. We've got three more days of the training um, that we'll be going through and then really putting together that scope and sequence K-12 K with some uh, new courses for middle school for next school year. And middle school parent-teacher conferences coming up on March 14th. That'll be four. March 6th. Okay. Um, on my birthday. Happy birthday. I won't be there. Um, but <laughs> uh, four, to, four to seven o'clock. All right. Under Strong Culture, um, the month of February in the elementary has been a celebration of kindness. In leading into the second bullet on there, and from our Blue Ribbon School of Excellence review, um, one of the things that we found out is the staff, the administration, and the parents all think that our students are very respectful, but the students do not think that they are respectful to each other. So we started a student RAM salute where students can salute each other for acts of kindness, for being respectful, responsible, and safe. So 
that's a new addition for us this year. Uh, students of the quarter, so in our newsletter for high school that just went out, we have um, have a section in there for the student of the quarter, so those nominations came through, and we'll also be celebrating with the students, uh, Sid Lucas, um, make sure to give a little pizza party, things like that for our students of the quarter. So um, well done to the students there who were celebrated. Middle school's assembly will be coming up next Wednesday um, where we also acknowledge and celebrate all the students, the students who um, just have shown growth. So we really try to focus it on the students that are performing their best and showing growth in a number of areas. And so this week is uh, National FFA Week. So we are celebrating with uh, lots of activities that Whitney and the FFA organization puts on. We have a Spirit Week uh, dress up this week. Uh, we had kickoff pep rally last week. There is a change war, pie in the face, emblem scavenger hunt, um, ice cream in the cafeteria during lunch. So lots of activities to celebrate all activities FFA. And uh, middle school and I think elementary monthly theme respect um, for coming into March. And the Middle School Service Project is Do Good Wisconsin Cereal Challenge. So that's where we are b collecting boxes of cereal to donate, but then um, we set them up and they do a domino uh, uh, effect with it. And there's actually a challenge to have the most cereal boxes with the most intricate domino challenge. So it'll, our student council will be putting that together at our monthly assembly uh, coming up in a couple weeks. So we're looking forward to that. And February is Dental Health Month. We had the opportunity to welcome in both Bullard Dental and Generations Dental to visit several of our classrooms at the elementary. Um, we, both middle and elementary, have received two um, scholarships to attend Camp, camp Anokiji this summer. And we, you might have to help me out with the beach party. I thought it was the PTO beach party that was last week. But whatever, the beach party at Gables. <laughs> So Lori Bierman um, does a community service project with our middle schoolers that goes over to Gables. We go over weekly, and they do different themes. And so this uh, last time was the beach at the party, uh, beach party, and really was quite a nice event. Um, the elementary was over there, and we also have high school students that go over and do various activities with the residents, and they really have a nice time. So in a couple more months, there will be another theme party as well that they'll do over there. And so definitely invite everyone to come over. Um, didn't get it on here, but hot off the press. Uh, just want to put a shout out to our seven wrestlers who are moving on to state this weekend. Uh, Chase, Dylan, Stone, Torin, Holton, Michael, and Diego. So we wish them uh, luck this weekend as they head on out to state. Also wanted to put a shout out to our Lions Club Student of the Year, which is going out to Bennett Obler. Uh, so I just had gotten that, that he was um, going to be that representing for Fredonia. And as well as Dominic Montella, who was also student of the month for the Sheboygan Elks Lodge. So wanted to put out those shout outs to our students. Well done by all of them. Thank you. Um, talk about trying to create a collaboration with our daycare and gables on the pond. That, through COVID and everything else, has really, um, we found it was too difficult with our little kids. So Lori Bierman and the middle school and the elementary, all now we're taking school-age kids and we're doing this. And they've just been great events. They, they've been, um, I think that's grown. Mary has helped with her part for planning. Um, so that's been, been a really cool transition and how we're doing it uh the united fund uh does help mary with a lot of the planning supplies for that so that's great and the other piece up there just reminded me i think i volunteered to get a pie in the face on friday so oh, right. yeah exactly <laughs> bring your change i hope my dad I, I can if i pay something enough i can get the change uh denied right it's like dollars and dollars yeah. okay i think we'll have to bring okay. some singles in there you go <laughs> Bring in 50 singles and drop it in. Okay, go find the 
Uh. Okay, next we have board committee reports, uh, policy committee met, and we'll be discussing that uh, in a couple minutes. Uh, achievement gap, AGR. Hard to get it. All right. Any questions? Anybody come up with anything? Okay. Um, overnight travel for esports. Actually. Yeah, so um, normally in state this coming up second season would be in Green Bay. Unfortunately, the place we were going to go to, they wanted to charge the association a lot of money for us to do it, so they reached out to some of the local colleges, and unfortunately, they're the local ones to do it. And so our state championships being held in River Falls, uh, which if you don't know, it's like a five plus hour drive. And we're usually lucky in our matches are usually right at the beginning. So we're asking for permission to potentially, if we make state, be able to go up to River Falls. Um, the association has some rooms saved and paid for by a sponsor. So we really just need the ability to go on up there. So. And administration supports. Yes. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Matt, is there a second? A second. Greeny, any other questions or discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Thank you, Lee. Good luck. Hopefully you didn't jinx yourself though, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um now we're on to the uh, policies. In policy, um, we decided that we could take all these um, updates under a single reading. If everybody else is okay with that, we didn't find anything that was too outrageous, um, anything different, just mostly minor updates. Um, if we do that, do we need a board of action for that? Is that? Yes, we do. Okay. So, um, does anybody have any problem with us taking them as a single? Okay, is there a motion to approve? Make a motion. Greeny, is there a second? I'll second. Amy, any questions or discussion? And just as a reminder to the board, we have three levels of approval. One is technical corrections, which is really just information for you. We don't have to approve it. The next layer is a one reading approval, which means is a little more a technical, but it was still really didn't didn't really meet the the change of the fabric of what we wanted in the policy. But anytime we're really changing it, the committee will come back and do a first reading and second reading. And, and right now, um, like we talk about with the cardiac arrest, um, this was a really good time to put this in. If you read the cardiac arrest stuff, I think it hits a lot of stuff that Blaine was worried about. Um, and you know, we we had a conversation. If I I'm just going to hit that right now. Sure. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we had a really nice conversation about requiring a um, EKG, and, and the thing we, we settled on is, is every every season we have a few kids that we find out don't go out for a sport because of the cost of a physical, and to add this cost um, and another barrier was something we didn't want to do. And then these policy updates came along, so there's a really nice piece of informing our parents um, with this, and we feel like it's a good step. We will watch what WIA does and what the National Football Federation does. If some of this starts getting some momentum, we'll of course follow those pieces. So, if I understood the reading I went through earlier, it's just recommendate. It's a recommendation. It's not a requirement at this yeah. point. Yeah. Correct. Good. Just keep it simple. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's. What I was asking when we talked briefly, yeah, that's what I was kind of looking for. So, yeah, sometimes things just happen naturally that yeah. uh, come nicely. And, and again, I, I, Neola is helping us stay on top of these things, and that's what we pay them to do. And um, when we go through this, it's just nice to know that there's always, anytime there's a change in a court case or anything else, we have all our policies up to date. And as, as a board and as a superintendent here, that's our number one job. And knowing that we have people helping us with it. And I'd like to point out that you came out also in the committee that Kim does a really nice job for us on these, giving us the summary sheet and 
marking things for us. And I, I do appreciate that because I know that's a lot of work. So shout out to you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, then we can skip item 14, which is first reading since we took them all as single. And that moves us down to approval of the resolution to participate in the WSNIP. Is that how you say that? I think so, yeah. 660301 agreement. Um, we redo this every year. Mm -hmm. and this is for food service. Is there a motion to continue? So moved. Chuck and Katie, any questions or discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. This next one, um, wow. I know, uh, I don't Karen like this next Baldi one. <laughs> is retiring, wow, 27 years. And uh, lots of thanks for her service. And she's, yeah. she may be being here longer than me, right? <laughs> I don't know. No. <laughs> so. No, that's going to be a hard position to, to fill, and uh, Karen's been fantastic. So yeah. she she deserves a wonderful retirement, um, but it doesn't mean we, some of us aren't uh, a little scared what we're going to do next. <laughs> yes. All right, and we have um, questions or co-curricular coaches and advisors, the winter play, high school track, high school wrestling, and middle school volleyball. Just a notification. And then we have notification for volunteers for coaches and advisors. Middle school volleyball, a student assistant, and middle school wrestling, wrestling administrative assistant. We're going to have to end this meeting. I can't talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any Anything on any of those? Here. On the winter play set design, it doesn't say the name. Of it. it sure doesn't. Do we have somebody for that? Oh, it doesn't open on our. That's okay. You were too busy on those uh, those policies. <laughs> okay. Thank you. That moves us into informational items. Okay, a couple of quick ones. Uh, if you remember, we did a resolution a few months ago asking DPI to allow us to start August 31st, right? whatever that date is, that, that August date, they have approved it. Um, so we will have that 31st and 1st, remember uh, September 1st is a Friday, gives us that two day week um, for this next year. And actually the Sheboygan County superintendents uh, have gotten together. We actually have a legislative um, rule that we're trying to suggest that is being supported by our local legislators to allow us to start the Monday before Labor Day, um, as long as we give that Friday off. So we, there's others that like what we're doing. I think Cedar Grove is doing it because with that Friday on the 1st, you have to start so late otherwise. Um, so we're looking if we can get a little, um, a little flexibility from that. Uh, two, you may have heard the CDC has come out with new vaccination guidelines. This didn't have to do with COVID. It's more um, they have some some updated guidelines on the different child vaccinations when they have to get them and some of those other things. So if you hear something, this wasn't a um, this had very little to do. There was a piece in there in COVID, but it was really just around the vaccination. So. I don't know, Sandy, if you want to, I, I, I looked into it. I didn't see anything that was too well, hot topic, but. Okay. Yeah. 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 I haven't heard much, but when this was changing, right, when we were kind of putting this together, so I thought I'd throw it out in case you guys hear anything. So it they just... haven't added a required vaccination. They've just changed dates on when they need to be done. And they further clarify the opt out procedure. Oh, okay. But this does not address COVID, does it? There's, there's, there's a, there's a comment in there about it being a. 
I just had one person reach out having concern about that. Mm -hmm. no. uh, and then also kind of fun is that is this Debbie who has Glenn coming Debbie yeah. Poole, right? So Debbie Pool reached out and Glenn Grothman is going to be here April 14th to just talk about what he does and explain to um, our students what does it look like in DC and, and all that other good stuff. So. Um, the other one, I wanted to see if anybody got a chance to see this. So one of the things we do, you know, I do work with New North around our pathways and then some of that other stuff. And we have been over the last month, been geo fencing our area, trying to see if we can get advertisements out about how to get kids connected to these career opportunities. So has anybody seen a random lake advertisement if they go to YouTube and you get those little 10 second commercials, 20 second commercials, has anybody seen them? So that we've had, we've had over 40 hits and I think it's been out a couple thousand times, um, but we're actually right now, part of New North, we're trying to focus on mothers the age 32. Don't ask me how this gets this granular, but this is how we're doing it. Mothers between 32 and 42 who have children, when they go to YouTube, different commercials, you can target different groups. And we're trying to, because we figure, no offense dads, but moms are a little more in tune to these things. Um, and then we want them to reach out to our counselor. Um, Hortonville and Random Lake were chosen to do this. It didn't cost us anything. Um, it's something we're looking at doing at the new one. So just want to put on your radar, if you do see it, uh, take a snapshot. It's uh, just a cool little video about how um, our curriculum is connected to pathways and, and how you can do some cool stuff with it. So, um, how do they know how old you are when you go to YouTube? Scary. Yeah. All <laughs> analytics. <laughs> yeah. It's done by Google. So, when you can you sign into Google to use YouTube, a lot of and then they can tell what sites you go to and then if you have kids or not because you're looking at Nike sneakers or this. So it's mm -hmm. it's it's scary the, the way we kind of refined it down. I mean, but it is it's it's an interesting model of how you can because it doesn't cost that much. I mean, this whole thing for the last few months was less than fifteen hundred bucks for us. Okay. We didn't pay for it. The new North Grant did. Um, but we they wanted a rural school. I'm like, hey, we'll take it and see how it works. So, so that's called cool. geofencing. Geofencing, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's around certain zip codes and then a certain target within those zip codes. So refresh by recollection. What's the new north? New North are eighteen counties from Crivitz down to Sheboygan County, all the way out to like the Appleton area. Um, and it's an economic development region. They have eight regions in the state of Wisconsin. M7 is the Milwaukee region. Um, and it's just how they drive economic growth and a bunch of other things. They do a lot of grants that, that we get um, around this area. So, okay. And the last thing I was asked to add was, did everyone got their audits last month? Were there any questions? No. Some of you used it for, for reading material. I know Reedy had a couple of questions that he was able to. Um, if you don't have them now, uh, we will have it on the agenda next month, right? Are we going to do it next month to be able to ask any questions? Yeah, we probably Okay. Don't need it. There you go. We're usually done with it by February. Oh, no, then we don't need to add it on in yeah, March. March. Question for that. Sure. We're good. Patty, do you have an extra one? I can get one last time. Otherwise, we can just keep dragging it out. I would, but I want to keep it. Oh, no, it's yours. Yeah. Patty, I can. Patty's not going to argue with that. Yeah. You bring that federal one, we'll look at it. All right. It's cover to cover. Yeah. That takes us to a close session. Next month, I'll quit you. Yeah, don't, don't. I don't think that'll happen, but now I don't feel left out. There yeah, you go. <laughs>
in their motion to go into closed session as permitted under Wisconsin State Statutes, Chapter 19, Section 1985, 1F, to consider administrative recommendations regarding two staff matters. Reading is there a second? Matt, this requires a roll call vote. Katie? Yes. Matt? Yes. I vote yes. Amy? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Reading? Yes. All right, we are in closed session. Thank you, everybody. For Thanks, coming everyone. Out Thank you.